I think that the panel this morning told us that perceptions matter because sometimes they can be so detached from the reality of what your organization is trying to say, it can create harm without you knowing. So bringing together some industry leaders from a variety of industries, corporate goods, communications experts, research and marketing experts, and social media and digital experts enabled us to talk through the whole ecosystem of perception and where it begins. So key takeouts are research and insights and knowledge generation. Know what your stakeholders are thinking of you, not just what you're broadcasting. Then use the right sort of consulting to engage, to create good communication strategy, lead from the top. A big challenge that we learned today was what leaders say doesn't always filter down through large organizations. Using that research to then make sure you regionalize your perception management plan, because what's appropriate, say in Hong Kong, may not work so well in Brazil. Managing then the output, and I think you know, being really critical was talking about the social media impact. When do you engage? When can you make a situation worse by getting too involved in responding to every perception statement or belief or criticism online? So choosing how to engage, understanding your knowledge, understanding your stakeholders and linking them in one ecosystem should create a perception ecosphere that enables corporates, organizations and stakeholders to manage how they're perceived and how they project their perception. Uh, I mean perception of a company can really help to shape the share price, the course of uh, the company's development in, and invest, investors appreciation and investor relations. Um, we've seen numerous examples of where a particular adverse uh, event has taken place, which has reshaped the, pe the perception of the company, the reputation of the company, and that has been directly related to uh, the, the, the share price and the performance of the share price um, in, an ad in, a, in, a, in an adverse way and in a positive way as well. There is no point in trying to uh, hide, the, the, hide from the issue or disguise the issue, dress it up in, in some other fashion. Okay, spin works so far. You will eventually be caught out and it will be damaging to your reputation, even more damaging to your reputation if you're caught out the second time around. So to be as frank as possible um, with all stakeholders, I think that is absolutely fundamental to the process. We've done quite a lot of research that demonstrates there's a direct correlation between reputation and your marketing equity. So to put it simply, if you have a strong reputation, you don't have to spend so much money on advertising, you don't have to spend so much money on marketing to get an impact. Conversely, if your reputation is weak, you can spend a lot of money and you still don't get penetration. And um, I think that that's actually stronger in developed markets as well. There's a very strong correlation between trust and your marketing equity, but it, it happens across the globe. You need to use a variety of tools. It's very context specific. Um, you know, if you're dealing with a crisis or if you're dealing with an ongoing monitoring, you make, you're looking at different processes. Um, and depending on your, the type of market and the market environment you're in, you're going to be looking at different processes and techniques. But one-to-one -one interviews with key opinion formers, absolutely critical for many markets uh, and for many types of industries, pharmaceuticals, things like that. Um, for some businesses, fast moving consumer goods, um, you know, you're, look, you're talking to the general public. Uh, in some cases, you, and many cases in fact, you need to be monitoring social media on a continuous basis, listening to opinion, and you also have to think about monitoring your, 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 the response to your reactions, because often your first reaction may not be the right one, or it may only take you a certain way forward in terms of dealing with the situation. So that monitoring needs to tell you, well, how has that response worked? How do we moderate it? Because actually, one of the positive things is that you can be wrong sometimes as long as you acknowledge that you're wrong and you address that issue. So, you know, you don't have to get everything right first time, but you need to understand the impact of your first action so that you can modify and correct. The level of trust about different forms of media varies a lot across the globe. In some markets, there's a, quite a high level of trust in large um, corporates. And in some markets, there's a lot of cynicism. Uh, some, some markets, the, the trust levels in uh, generally actually have to say that people take a more trusting of um, more traditional media than social, social media. 
However, there are, that varies depending on the nature of the social media and also sometimes the context. In Russia, people are, it seems, very frustrated uh, with social media on the whole. There's so much coming at them that, that it's very low um, sense of belief. But in other markets, um, you know, it can be a very powerful tool. So it, it varies according to the culture. It varies according to, in a sense, almost the development of the different media outlets. And of course, it varies according to the political controls on those communication sources. Corporate perception, the corporate reputation, the seven is very important because you're a stakeholder, not just consumers. You need to engage your NGO regulators and all kinds of stakeholders. They're the one to help you to shape the company and how you communicate to the consumer at the end. I think the ability to forecast and foresee is very important. It would be way too late if you only talk to your stakeholder when it happens. That's why you need to do all the analysis from a both internal and external perspective to understand what your stakeholder wants. Once you understand the external environment and your internal environment, you can map your strategy accordingly to, to mitigate the risk.